Welcome to Status Check with Spivey, where we talk about life, law school, law school admissions, a little bit of everything. We're in the realm of law school today because the rankings were uh, released last night publicly by U.S. News. Let me tell you with the release what I'm going to talk about and not talk about in this podcast. I am going to talk about things that I don't think anyone has mentioned or knows yet. Um, what I'm not going to talk about is the st- the rankings changes themselves for two reasons. The, the first reason is you can go to our blog. You can go to various other websites. You can go to U.S. News themselves, and you can see the rankings changes. If you go to our blog, you can see which schools. What we, all, we always do a plus minus. So if you're interested in the fluctuations, you can see that on our, on our blog. But those fluctuations are pretty freaking arbitrary and random. To begin with, the U.S. News has to have fluctuations or they would never sell subscriptions. So they always introduce some new methodology, and I'll get into the new methodology, in that changes the rankings every year. Do those changes matter? Well, ma- behaviorally, they matter to some. I've podcasts on, on the psychological reasons why rankings seem to matter to people. I, I would suggest taking a look at that, taking a listen to that. But is a school, is the school you're interested in magically for better to you because a random arbitrary media newspaper that ranks everything on the planet, like hospitals, whatever, who, who psychometricians really know nothing about or very little about law school should they be telling you that the law school you're interested in is magically four better because they changed the formula? Of course not. That school didn't get six wars overnight. That's a little bit silly. So I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna talk about that. What I am gonna talk about is two things that uh, um, I haven't been mentioned much or at all yet, although to be fair, this is we're like 12 hours since they dropped the rankings. The first is the methodological changes. And I mean, these are pretty interesting and I think helpful. I think U.S. News, as much as they're beat up on, is slowly getting the equation better versus, versus worse. So let me talk about the, the briefly the methodological changes. Employment is now 33% of the rankings. So the employment has gone up since several years ago, which is good. You want to look at outcomes of the schools you're looking at. The change is that the new... It's newly averaged between the two most recent uh, graduating class years. So that multi-year average is interesting, and I'm going to go back to that. That's a change. First-time bar passage is 18% of the rankings, and the change is is that it's, again, newly averaged between the two most recent graduating class years. Ultimate bar passage is 7% of the total rankings. It is newly averaged between the two most recent graduating class years. Peer assessment, 12.5%. Above the law is, is reporting that slightly tweaked. I don't see it. So I, I, my understanding is that is there is no change in the, in the peer assessment. The lawyer judge assessment is 12.5%. And this is actually, I wouldn't say this is slightly tweaked. I would say this is a major change to be determined. But U.S. News appears to now be using not... Um, their former survey method, but a a third-party outsource company, much more valid, by the way, to survey lawyers and judges. This could have a change on what's been a really traditionally stable component of the rankings. But on the flip side, I think lawyers and judges have an idea in their head what what are the the top t- cluster of 14, 16, 18, 25, 50 schools. So to be determined, we'll, we're going to take a look at that from a data perspective. It might change the rankings a good deal. It might change the rankings uh, minorly. LSAT slash GRE is still 5%. Undergrad GPA is still 4%. Acceptance rate is still 1%. None of that has changed. Student to faculty ratio is 5%. Library resources, 2%. So what does what do this change do? Uh, basically, two things, it or maybe three. It stabilizes a ranking so that there are are no crazy swings that otherwise would have been seen this year, which is really important to U.S. News. If there are crazy fluctuations, particularly in the top twenty-five, they get attacked for 
the differences from year to year. If Harvard goes from one to 16, people have less belief in the, in the validity of the U.S. news rankings. If Yale drops from one to two or three, people have less belief in the validity of the U.S. news rankings. I can't say this for a fact, but there's been a lot of attention to the fact that U.S. news seems to, and this is a very not scientific, take the data, then play with the data, and then build their model around the data they have so that it produces the outcomes that they like, and then they publish that data. Again, I do not, I'm not. i not saying that as a fact. It's been reported. It's been discussed among deans to me this year that it seems like they did that. But if you think if, – if they are doing that, think about a, a, a cancer researcher with a formula to – have an intervention, a modality for, to help cure or mitigate the, the um, symptoms of cancer. You would never want that person asking for the data first and then building their model and antidote around that model. You would want them to find the antidote and then test the antidote. And that doesn't seem to be what's happening. The other thing about the U.S. News two-year, the multi-year averages is, is in employment, it, it means that if schools start using fellowships to juice its own rankings, it will take longer for that to take full effect. So one thing we are curious about with this shift from admissions inputs, which are all but meaningless now, to employment outcomes, which are very important in rankings, is we were curious if schools were going to start doing school-funded jobs and reporting 100% or near 100% employment. U.S. News has made it a little bit slower for that to actually have any input. I mentioned this earlier, but they're polling big law attorneys independent of the name school that give them in the lawyer judge rankings. We suspect that will tilt those in favor of schools that are and were big hitters in big law, although we're still going to look into that. So basically, it seems like U.S. News cleaning up the volatility that they introduced from last year's changes. They needed to do that. So this is no surprise. We predicted they would do that. Also of note, um, just because a school, part- quote, participated by U.S. News's definition, that doesn't mean they really did. It seems to us like participating schools, some of them, some of them, only gave U.S. News their publicly available 509s, which the boycotting schools are doing. So I think U.S. News is being pretty liberal with the word participating. We don't know how many schools didn't share other data, uh, their, their survey data with U.S. News. So those are the changes. Those are the cha- Those changes, incidentally, are the only things that produced the the differences in the, the the dramatic differences in the predicted models. So basically, we and others were able to predict with a high degree of accuracy how the rankings were to, were going to come out because because of the boycott. U.S. News is is using almost entirely publicly available data except for those surveys. So they U.S. News had to make changes because they couldn't have multiple people able to predict their rankings and basically put them up in December. And we knew changes were coming. Now we know the four or five changes. There could be hidden changes. I'll give you an example. Maybe they round up at 0.5 for some schools and maybe they run down at 0.5 for other schools. That takes us a little bit longer to reverse engineer. So that over time, we'll know about some of these hidden changes that they, that they often obfuscate from the public for reasons of they don't want people being able to replicate precisely their model. To date, no one's ever precisely replicated their model one-to-one. Only U.S. News has their own model. We and others have gotten very close. Um, Side note, at the U.S. News level, at the undergrad U.S. News level, it's even much more difficult because they have a bunch of throughput measurements that would be incredibly hard to reverse engineer. We think those throughput measurements are coming for law schools downstream. Might not be of interest to you if you're an applicant, but if you're a dean of a law school or a faculty member, I I would expect throughput measurements are coming. I'll give you an example of what I mean by that, by that, although I'm just making that up, this up. A throughput measurement would be something like you take the median LSAT of the entering class, and then you take the bar results of the exiting class, and you compare the LSAT with how well, the entering LSAT with how well people pass the bar, 
as a way of saying how well did that law school do with taking applicants, to, turning them into students who actually you then pre prepare to be lawyers. So in this scenario, which again, I'm making up, you actually, as a school, you wouldn't want to have like a 175, 174, 173 LSAT unless you had a perfect bar passage. You would rather have like a 168 LSAT and a really high bar passage because that would show if they introduce a, a metric like that, that your school is doing a better job of taking people with slightly lower LSAT scores, but, cr but doing really well with them passing the bar. So that would be interesting if that comes to be determined. Let me switch gears. The second thing we're, that we're detecting on our level is that, and this is really good and really interesting, and I would love to hear people's feedback on this. So please, in the comment section, or if you see anything online, or if you happen to be someone who, who who's also uh, produces US News models and data, we would love to hear if this resonates with you. I have talked with other people, including the media, but on our end, what appears to be is that the analytics, the data about the rankings being published seems to be down. We've talked to multiple people who, who have confirmed that they see, particularly in the media, they seem to sense less interest in the rankings this year. Message boards that we're on, the applicants seem to be more along the lines of posting many, many messages of, you know, the rankings are, are arbitrary and silly. Go visit the school. Trust your instincts. Don't use the rankings. That seems to be way up. One thing worth noting then is if this is true and rankings are in, in the moment less prominent and stay less prominent, that means I'm wrong. I've been wrong. I've said to the media and on podcasts numerous times, two years from now, and I said this last year, the rankings gonna be, are going to be just as important to people and their behavior as they were, even with all the rankings debacle of last year, even with some rankings um, challenges from US News this year, I predicted they would be just as important. So I think it's important to note, like we're all wrong at times and we don't know where this is trending, but it, we still know it would be a good thing and I hope I am wrong. Now I'm looking through a, a, a lens that's not 100% wide open. So I do not know. The, it would be interesting if U.S. News had their own analytics that supported that the rankings were down, stable, or up. I suspect, like most business entities, they would only report that if it was up. So I doubt we're going to get any data from U.S. News. But let's just double-click or, or stop on this for a second. If the rankings are holding less prominence in the eyes of decision makers, be it you, applicants, you, deans of law schools, that's a really, really, really good thing. From the applicant perspective, if it's not making as much impact on your decision making, you can focus more on things like debt or fit or programs you're interested in. We've done tons of podcasts on these. And I would really hope that you, you could tune into them. Other people have. The, the, the number of podcasts on the, the silliness, I mean, rankings are stupidly fascinating. I've always said that. I find them fascinating for psychological reasons, but there's no way at the micro level, at the individual level, should they ever really impact much other than maybe a rough guide your decision making. So look at employment outcomes, look at debt. And it seems like maybe for the first time in my 25 year career where rankings have taken more and more prominence over the years, they might be for the first time taking less prominence. That's a great thing. If you're a dean of law school, it's also wonderful news. To think about it, if you, if you could stop worrying about your rank, whether it goes from 25 to 35 or needing it to go from 25 to 19, and start caring, okay, how does this help students? A placard that was on my mentor and former dean's uh, desk. But how does this help students? The further we get away from the prominence of the rankings, the better that is. We have early detection that there might be, at least in this year, less prominence, less behavioral 
influence on the rankings and applicant in law school decision making. And I'm going to end on that note because it's a wonderful note to end on. I will be on multiple podcasts. On these podcasts, I will discuss the more of the methodological changes. And if they ask me, I might comment on the, the changes themselves, who went up, who went down. So that's coming tomorrow and all throughout the week. But this is the first thing we produced. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Mike Spivey of the Spivey Consulting Group.